You've got her. We've heard about, and rightly so, about how your team has been able to, I, I, that a mark of a good team is, is how it handles adversity. Mm -hmm. And you've done that pretty, pretty darn good. Is there anything adversarial about this year's team? Um, yet? No, I, I, I think not yet, but it's coming, right? And I, I think... Uh, you know, obviously, it's it's had to deal with some coaching staff turnover. You know, probably a little bit already, which is, you know, that's probably for a team that has veteranness has had to deal with that. Um, you know, we've dealt with a little bit of injury in spring ball, which has been really good to watch some other guys have to take some reps, and nothing that I don't think will have any um, huge effect on Iowa State football going into the fall. I think all those injuries hopefully will be you know, healed up and ready to go by the time the season starts. So, you know, I, I we haven't, but it's coming. And I think probably the greatest gift to this team is they had to deal with so many things last year that I think at least building that confidence that, man, we will deal with injury, we will deal with setback, we will deal with hard things, and continuing to learn how to handle that and work through that, because really that does define at the end of the season, if you want to reach your full potential of what you've got the ability to become, you better be able to work through really hard and, and adversity really, really well. Um, and sometimes that comes within a football game. You know, the great thing is we've tried to make fall camp or spring ball as hard as we have since we've been here. Uh, we tried to make it the hardest winter we had since we've been here because I want to put adversity into these guys. I want to see failure happen and I want to see how they respond to it. You know, and, and honestly, we had probably had. 125 play scrimmage Saturday, um, and it was unbelievable. You know, we had some really, you know, offense started out great. Defense had to respond. They respond back, play really great the second half of the scrimmage, and and then you know you have to have a drive at the end of it to win it. And it's like uh, all those things that you're trying to manufacture this time of year because you just, as we've said, football's different. You can't go scrimmage somebody else and create those things. You have to do a great job of creating it and. You know, I think we, rather maybe than what I've done in the past, sometimes when you had a little bit more of a veteran team, you know, we've really tried to amp it up and really try to make it the hardest, most challenging, both mentally and physically, that we could this offseason. I think it's benefited this group so far. Is that because you've got such a quote-unquote good team returning? Yeah, I just think yes. And, and I think there's still so much competition right now, you know, that – um, I think the only way to know what your gaps are and know where you need to continue to work to move yourself forward is to go through really hard things and to work through challenging times. And, you know, we've tried to create that maybe more so within how we've practiced and how we've created our winter and how we've created our spring block. So um, I think so far this group's done a great job of responding to that. Matt, you kind of delved into my annual question of what is usually kind of a theme for the spring. It sounds like your theme is kind of like manufacturing adversity throughout the off season and in the spring. How are there any details like in the weight room? Do you set the max higher than they've ever had it? So they experience that failure and understand where the growth comes from and all that. Or are there any specific things you do to get that? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, I think last year as we were trying to kind of like, man, resettle ourselves, right? I, you know, we were, you know, it was back to what are our standards here? What's, what is the standard in the weight room? What is the standard on the football field? How do you prepare? How do you practice? What's the standard and what's, what's that look like? Because I felt like, as we talked about a year ago, and man, we were off that standard a little bit. Um, and, I, and now I think it's understanding that if you want to be great, if you want to, to be uncommon in football, then your best has to become the standard every day. And so that's really been our theme of understanding what, man, how can I be my best every single day? What, what does that look like? Because in college football, that is what it takes. And somebody's going to do it. Somebody will do it in the Big 12. Somebody's going to do it nationally. Somebody will make that commitment and some team will do that. And, you know, I, I think that's what makes f football funny. You know, I mean, you got 130 kids, um, you know, you're, you're trying to, be about the team, but all those guys have their own individual agenda as well. And so it's like, how do we morph that into our best becoming the standard in everything we do collectively, how we play, how we practice individually, how you become your best so we can be our best. So um, that's really been our mindset in terms of what we've done and, and really, you know, not shying away from hard things. You know, I, I think the only way to find out how your best becomes a standard is you got to work through hard things and you got to manufacture and create hard 
hard. Um, and sometimes hard is just showing up and being your best every single day, and that's hard enough for a lot of people. Matt, what to, what's the format going to be Saturday? What are the people going to see? Yeah, I don't know yet. You know, I, I think we'll, we'll see. I, like I said, we are dinged up. You know, we've got a lot of guys that are, you know, we've got ankles and shoulders and stuff. Um, but the reality of it is, you know, we will get a really good work in Saturday. Um, you know, I, I still think for from my end of it, we're not going to waste away an opportunity to have a great crowd, to waste away to, you know, evaluate our football team. So, you know, you're going to see live football. We'll see us scrimmaging. I don't know what that format will look like based on where our numbers are. Um, but it's, you know, what I don't want to be is a waste of time from, from our end of it. So um, I think the biggest thing is to watch our football team continue to grow. And again, there's a lot of competition right now. And I think that part's really exciting. There's a lot of guys that have emerged, um, probably more guys that have emerged this spring than maybe I've seen in a long time. And um, that part's really exciting too, because I, you know, we'll see how far they've emerged here as we get through the end of fall camp. But man, they've at least emerged to be noticed and say, man, I'm coming to fall camp to take somebody's job. And that part's exciting too. Who has the injuries? I, man, it'd be a, a litany of them right now. Anybody of significance? No, I, I would say no. You know, I think we're really fortunate that way. I, I, the, the one name I should say, Carson Willich, it got hurt um, towards ACL at the beginning of, of spring practice. He will be out for the year. Um, so Carson is obviously a guy that's that's played good football for us and um, certainly disappointing, but he's, he's already had surgery, uh, already on the mend. And, you know, unless he gets back late in the season, my guess is, you know, we won't see him again until the following season. But, uh, you know, Carson's, uh, uh, he's done a great job for us already, being a great leader. But he will, he is the one guy that I would tell you we will not get back for, for the fall next year. Matt, sticking at linebacker, in retrospect, how difficult and how impressive was it that Jack Sadowski was able to become a day one starter, not just on special teams, but positionally? And B, what have you seen from him in year two where a lot of growth obviously can be made? Yeah, you know, Jack is a special kid just because he loves football and he works really hard at his craft. And I think that's probably the thing that Jack probably stood out so much from, man, him coming mid-year as a high school senior to, you know, really the reps that he got last year. Now, you know, what I would tell you is that that room is as talented as it's been. And, you know, you're, you, you also have a guy like Caleb Bacon, who, in my opinion, um, maybe since Mike Rose has been here, is the most talented linebacker that we've had. Um, you know, I would tell you probably the most impressive spring right now would be Cooper Ebel. I mean, redshirt freshman who has been nothing short of exceptional so far through the spring. And so, you know, I think that part's exciting because I think what Jack has done and how he did it has probably kind of like laid the groundwork for the excitement that, that's really surrounding this linebacker room. I think this Kale Brazina is going to have a chance to be a special, special football player. And so you look at that group right now and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of excitement coming out of that room because you're talking about a lot of guys that we feel like from top to bottom the competition's going to be hot and heavy going into fall camp who's starters who's playing in significant minutes um, I think that room's got a chance to really take a huge step forward from where we were a year ago um, and we'll need that room to take a huge step forward so we're excited I hate to be the one to ask you something you know like talking about, but the transfer portal opens in 24 hours mm -hmm. about how do you go about managing the numbers when you have to add about a dozen kids from your high school class and further attrition and different things at this time of the year? Is it a big challenge for you guys? No, it hasn't been here. No, I think we try to do a great job of honest conversation with our kids. Um, you know, we kind of know where we're at. We, we certainly know who's here and who may be leaving. Um, does it get harder in today's world? Sure does. Can anything happen? Sure can. Um, but I think we're really fortunate with the, the leadership we have in our football program, the young men we have in our program that, you know, we, we try to, you know, we try to do what's best for them. And they certainly have always tried to be honest and upfront with us. And then to pivot a different direction, um, Coach Rashid seems really excited about the defensive line and the depth that's emerged there. What have you seen from that group this spring to make him so excited? Yeah, I think, well, you, you've seen, you know, the emergence of some of these kind of like a linebacker, some of these, I would say the red shirt freshman class, we thought we had a really special freshman class a year ago. And this emergence of some of the red shirt freshman class has been really impressive. This Kennard Snyder, 
Um, obviously not part of that redshirt freshman class, but a transfer has maybe been as impressive as anybody we've had on campus so far. Um, uh, really dynamic, can do a lot of things from a pass rusher standpoint, got heavy hands in the run game, been really impressive. You talk about the redshirt class, um, three guys probably worth really talking about. I think Zamir Hawk has, Zamir Hawk may be as talented of a nose tackle as we've had here. I mean, what he did Saturday was as impressive as anything I've seen in a scrimmage situation. Um, you know, he is again flashed every single practice this spring. Uh, Samuel Same is a young man that's put on 20 pounds this offseason. Uh, we were really excited about a year ago. He's just skinny. Um, and you feel like he has continued to make great growth forward. I think he's going to have a uh, you know, an opportunity to have a real impact on this football team, you know, this coming fall. And then, you know, a young man that walked on our program in red shirt, Vince Benetti. And man, I, I would say he's another young guy that's really flashed too. And I think he's putting himself in a position to challenge to, to make a role for him on our, our team. So you couple that group with some veteranness like J.R. Singleton and obviously Dom Orange and you see T.O. and Ike and some of those guys, we're always going to be better. Joey Peterson, we're going to be better when we have great depth along that line. And we're certainly going to be better when we can affect the quarterback. And I think, you know, you're, you're seeing some guys that have the ability to do that because they've got great twitch. And, you know, we, we've just grown up, to be honest with you, in that room. And, and that room was really, really young a year ago and, uh, you know, got great reps, at times made really good, good growth a year ago, but I think has really had a great offseason, has had a great winner physically looks like a different football team than we were a year ago, especially there, which is big for us. Follow-up question on Carson Willich. Was that the same knee that he dealt with no. in high school? No. The other no. one. Okay, so. wow. Um, you, you already talked a little bit about some of the guys at linebacker and on the D-line. Most improved players may be of the spring. Can you kind of touch on some of the other positions as well, guys, that you've been really impressed with? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's safety. Um, you know, again, some of those those young guys, I mean, Tayshawn James, Tayshawn James, I mean, Tayshawn James makes that play against Oklahoma State on third down, that if we don't make that play, we don't win the game. And I think right there, you're like, oh, this guy's got a chance to be really special. And, you know, we ended up making the, the concerted effort to redshirt him a year ago. But I'll tell you, I mean, I, I feel like that guy's come in with great purpose and intent. Uh, you know, Jamison Patton continues to, to do a great job. I think he continues to grow. You saw him just keep taking really great steps last year. I think physically looks like a different football player. Um, Cam Smith it, it would be another name at, at safety that I, again, played for us and did some great things on special teams. I think continues to grow forward. And, um, you know, you look at corner. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've, I think I've heard, you know, that John Tez talked about a bunch by our coaching staff, but John Tez Williams, I mean, man, that guy, he has had from the winter to where we are today, maybe as good of a winter month uh, slash spring as anybody body physically, as good as he's looked and has really done a great job of performance on the field. And then, you know, I think Darren Porter, I, I, I've been really high on DP um, since he's moved over there. And again, I, 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 there's, he's had some of that TJ transition, you know, there were, you know, Man, I think last year you saw some of those make some pretty good plays and then be an inch away from making the play. And I feel like that guy's really gained confidence. He's almost up to 200 pounds, and uh, he's got elite length and a guy that can really help us. And, you know, you flip over offensively. Um, you know, I, I, I really I love what our quarterback room looks like. I think there, there's a lot of competition there right now. Rocco's had an elite spring. I, I'm really proud of what he's been able to do in terms of just the growth you would hope he would make from where he was at the beginning, at the end of last season. Man, can you take a big step forward? And I, I would tell you his last six, seven practices have been nothing short of exceptional. And um, there's a lot of competition as well in that room. Um, you know, the the young guys at tight end have been impressive. You know, I, I think Cooper Alexander for what he's done as a true freshman has been a been a pretty impressive football player already. Um, I think he'll push to, to help our football team. I think the O-line's, again, very similar to what I said about the D-line. I think Coach Clanton probably would tell you he's really excited about what that group looks like because, again, I, I just a total physically different looking football team than even we were a year ago. And I think that's huge for our football program to grow forward, as, as you guys have heard me say that multiple times. 
um, you know, the wide receiver position. You know, Benny Nagoya has had a great spring. Um, you know, I think you talk about creating adversity. Kind of had a down day last Saturday and then was phenomenal this past Saturday. You know, and you see him. He was really having a great spring, took a little bit of step back, and then, man, bounced back and had a great week last week. So we think he's got a chance to be pretty special as well. So, you know, those are some names. Running back position, obviously, Abu. Those guys continue to do a great job. I think Dylan Lee has really flashed through spring, which is exciting. You know, I think between Carson and Dylan and, you know, I think Jalen, man, there's going to be a lot of guys there that can do some different things for us with the ball in hand. So um, it's going to be a fun race to watch that all through August as well. Go ahead, Randy. Um, yeah, speaking of, uh, of you, you're talking about backup quarterback, what's, who's, who's flashing there? Yeah, you know, I, I think that group will only continue. I think JJ's grown. I mean, he physically looks as good as he's ever looked. Um, you know, I think he's had a he's had a really good spring. You know, I, I think Connor Moberly has, is a guy that's certainly flashed this spring. It's been really fun to have him here early. Um, I would say for a young football player, he's got real confidence and maturity. You know, obviously, I think when you play the way you did, you know, his last two years in high school, that gives him the ability to come in and have confidence and maturity. So we, we feel like that room's pretty healthy right now, and, and we're really excited about what those guys all have the ability to do. And um, it'd be fun to watch those guys, you know, and it'd be fun to watch those guys Saturday, to be t quite honest with you, you know, continue to grow. And, you know, those are Saturdays huge for those guys because those guys get an opportunity in front of a crowd to be put in a situation of, like, how do you manage the offense? How do you manage, man, the excitement and the energy that comes with, uh, you know, just people sitting in the crowd that's different than practice. And so, um, yeah, I think those will be another great evaluation tool as we get to Saturday. Will fans see anything different this fall? in the offense under Mouse um, or just refinement from? No, I, I think you'll see us here. continue to grow forward. And, and Randy, no different than, you know, who do we want to be? I think we've always said we want to be, man, who our, our best players are. How do we tailor make the offense to put those guys in best position to have an impact? And, you know, I, I would say, you know, it's been a while since we've had some outside receivers like we, we feel like we do right now with the guys that we have. It's been a little bit since, you know, you know, we've had an elite slot like Jalen has, I think, grown into becoming. Um, yet, you know, equally, you feel really good about the tight end spot. You feel really good about, you know, the depth on the offensive line and what that line has the ability to become um, through the fall. And, and then, you know, obviously with a veteran quarterback, at least not going in with a quarterback that you just don't know exactly what what he is, um, you have a pretty good idea of what the quarterback is. And now, how do we how do we fit all that together and let those guys, you know, be able to play to the to the greatest of their capability? And you know, I think at times last year we were just trying to figure out what are we, who are we. Um, let's try to do a great job, not screwing the game up, and let's let's try to do a great job of figuring out who we are. And we did a great job of that. Um, now, how do we build on that, and how do we accentuate some of those real positives in our offense? All right, thank you.